Hello everyone, welcome to Ring Stizzle and Filters with Letty, Theo, Hannah and Cinti. And unfortunately she is not with us today. But anyway, this is a safe place where we will talk about the most challenging issues caused by the racism. So all of us have been in Molina, Malaga for the past week, learning, educating ourselves about racism as a part of the project called Choosing Anti-Racism, the Radical Reorientation of Our Consciousness, hosted by IFM. So we're sure the definition of racism is discrimination and pre prejudice towards people based on their race or ethnicity. So we also learned about the forms of racism and they are interpersonal, institutional, systemic and structural. So I'll continue with some personal examples and uh, stories. Okay, yes. Yeah. So firstly, a little bit of like a background check. I'm Hannah. I'm half Slovene, half Ethiopian. I currently live in Slovenia and I'm 18 years old. Hi, I'm Theo. My mom's French, so I'm fifty percent French, and my dad's British Indian. But both my grandparents on my dad's side are Indian, so technically I'm fifty percent Indian, just with an extra added nationality British. I used to live in London, but now I live in France, and I'm seventeen years old. So yeah, we're gonna be like debating um, about racism in the countries that we live. Um, we're gonna talk about our experience. And as we have been learning, um, we actually realized how much deeper than just like interpersonal racism in general actually it is. Um, Natalia has um, told us that there are different types of racism and not many people realize that there, there are like the different types, you know, the structural. So we're gonna go over this part. So the different types of racism are interpersonal, institutional, systemic and structural. So what is interpersonal racism? Interpersonal racism is treating others with discriminatory behavior that ranges from microaggressions to physical violence. An example of this is a person using slurs or showing aggression towards people of color, mistreating others based on their skin color. Our next term is institutional racism. So what is institutional racism? Institutional racism is our policies or behaviors within an organization intended to discriminate against people of color. An example of this is a hiring manager disqualifies candidates based on their names, citing a cultural threat that's actually discriminatory. Next, we have systemic racism. Systemic racism is perpetuated discrimination within a system that was founded on racist principles or practices. An example of this is a social work department lacks diversity among staff and students, despite training them to service communities of color. Our final term is structural racism, which is uh, the cultural values in society are so ingrained in daily life that they are seen as the way things are. An example of this is a judge gives an envious sentence to a person of color and a white person with the same charges. These are the four types of racism. Yeah, and it's very like sad that like how, how deeply rooted racism actually is. So let's talk about the roots because um, not many people like realize how deeply rooted racism is in our system. So how did like the system even originate? But where did it come from? So many experts believe that the origins of racist beliefs were founded upon greed and self-interest almost 400 years ago on the transatlantic self uh, safe trade. It was so that slavery was a cheap option and people working for money to a fair price. And uh, it was a way to get more money. The interesting thing to me is that like not many people realize in Europe that they're even being like racist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they believe in the stereotypes. They um, they're just saying the slurs. They don't think anything is wrong with it. Like especially like one of my friends told me like told us that in Serbia, for example, they're learning that black people have like lower intelligence or like lower IQ. And it's just like so sad that, you know, it's the, it's like this common. Um, do you like want to share any experiences, maybe? Um, so I have a few examples of interpersonal racism. So uh, when I, I've lived in England and uh, London 15 years and haven't received any racist comments. And then I moved to France three years ago and um, I had a few racist experiences. So, um, it's it's things from shunt up Indian boy all the way to 
go back to a country you dirty in and print so your brain is a part of it but do you think like the racism is like still in the uk even though you did yeah, as that is there's definitely still racism in the uk i just in london because it's so multicultural diverse people from so many different backgrounds religions cultures you grow up and you see so many different cultures and you grow up more open-minded i think so you're when you grow up in that environment you're less likely to be racist because you can be friends with them all right because you, you live in like the mostly like the village in really on it in yeah in france i live in the middle of nowhere in france but even in cities i've lived a few months in cities and they're still racist yeah it's still racist yeah in slovenia for example we have like 0.0 like one percent of like black people or like people from other countries so it's it's very like um like racism it's not very common because of that but still i have like experienced um like ugly looks most of the time you know like kind of the, like the passive racism one example was when me and my father were just like going like down the street to a shop and like one of the like slovenian old ladies came to us and she was just like oh um go back to your own country or something like that or and then we were just like very confused because you know it's still my country like i was born there and she was just like we don't need people like you here and we were just like okay and well the only thing you can, can do is like ignore them because you're not gonna change their minds you know and uh, w like one um other thing is i have a friend and she's an actress and she she's black she's from um Cameroon. and she's trying like you know to pursue her career whatever and it's just so interesting to see because it's so much harder for her to get a job and even when she gets a job it's just like i don't know if she gets the part of a cleaning lady or an immigrant or a, like that african lady who doesn't know how to speak slovene she doesn't get like the main roles and she never really like um you know pursued her career or whatever because she was like always given such you know little roles um yeah and it's so sad and also like one thing that happened was when i was driving my bike and this man just shouted at me like you're such a monkey i was just like oh wow and also like sort of like passive racism that we're experiencing yeah. that i mentioned before just like for example the looks or oh, just for example when you go into a shop and then um you because i go into shop with friends and so they happen to be white and i'm the only person of color they will just check my bag at the end they won't check any of their bags and that's when uh that happens it's like it hurts a bit you're like why are they checking my bag and not theirs yeah did your friends like say anything no yeah because i I think that's like the hardest part when you see like your friends not like standing up for you when you can't. They were like wondering why I would, why they was being searched. They were surprised. Yeah, but they, they could still like, you know, yeah, say they, something. They probably should have said, why are you not checking out? Yeah. And it's so sad because like it makes you so uncomfortable. And I think when people just look at you, they just made up in their own minds, like decision of what kind of person yeah, you are. are. Yeah, who you are. Not even knowing who you are. They yeah. Know. They already know who you are. Or they know. Yeah, especially in high school, they always like kind of mask racism through through jokes. Yeah. Have you like ever experienced yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. It's not, it's not because you, you say something racist through a joke that it's suddenly acceptable. No, it's definitely not acceptable. It's yeah. an every single racist comment, racist joke, everything, it lowers your self-esteem, your confidence, your belief in yourself so it's just, it just totally damages who you are or do you know that one like oh i'm not racist i have a black friend yeah. or i have an indian friend and it's just, it's just like hurts so much because what if you are that exception well what if you are that friend that yeah. your friends are making like you know this comment on um yeah it's so sad and it's like it shapes you as a person how do you yeah. feel like do you, do you think you would feel different about yourself if you were white growing up in like France or UK? Oh, if I was, yeah, definitely. I honest, I always wanted to be white because like everyone around me was white. Like every single movie that I saw, like there were white characters. Like there was this like idea of a perfect 
you know, woman or a perfect girl. And it was always like white with like light hair, with like light eyes. So yeah, it's always been hard. And I think if I grew up white, I would just have like much more confidence in myself. Yeah, definitely. Like I'd always faking it. It's there, but I'm like faking it most of the time because like fake it till you make it. Um, what do you f what do you think? Yeah, there's an I've been white. I would definitely have had much, much, much more confidence at school in France. And not that I was fine not being white, like it's normal. But in in uh in France, yeah, I would have had a different life. Uh, it's interesting that when people like hear the racism word, they just like think, Oh yeah, that's happening in the USA. It's just there because of like slavery and, and colonization, but it's... I maybe also think that in our world today that racism doesn't exist, but it definitely does. It's... It... Exactly. Um, okay, so it's very interesting that when people hear the word racism or just like about racism, they just assume that it's happening in the US yeah. because of the co colonization and everything. Yeah, but it's actually happening all around the world. Yeah. And now we have a special guest here, Maruf. Um, and he's gonna tell you a little bit about where he comes from, who he is, and we're gonna hear a little about his story. Okay, so Maruf, can you introduce yourself? Hello, Hana. Thank you for having me. I am Maruf. I am Palestinian from Israel. Uh, do I need to run my edge? <laughs> and I need that. It's for is. I, I would like to share you some stories about my life and uh, the country that I come from. Okay, so can you tell us, can you explain to us what is happening in your country? Can you give us like some historical background? Like what, what has been happening? What is happening now? I know it's a complex thing what's happening in your country, but can you explain what is happening right now for the listeners to like understand? Yeah, I sure, yeah, sure, for sure. Uh, I'm happy to share you this information. Uh, let's go back to 1948 when uh, the world uh, recognize uh, about Israel. The topic is like that uh, they come, they take the land from the Arab people, and uh, in, the, in, in the Jewish history, it's a holy land for them. So they think. Uh, that it's allowed to take the land, but in the other side, uh, the the Arab people they know it's our land. We 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 born here. Yeah, we born here. Yeah, well, we born here, so it's our land. Uh, I will not talk from forty eight. And yeah, now I can share you some story about me personal that happened today, and that what we live every day in Israel. I would it. So it's a conflict between the Jewish, the Jews and the Arabs. It's conflict between Jewish and Arab and Arab and the, the government. Oh, okay. so it's, it's a complex. Yeah. yeah. Complex. But you have experienced a lot of inequality there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about your experience? About my experience? Yes, sure. Uh, we as Arab in Israel face this indifferently, but I will talk about the uh, a person, oh, there's someone. Yes, yeah, okay. So uh, one day I just went to visit Jerusalem, and every Muslim guy or every Muslim person, it's a guy or girl, not matter, uh, visit Jerusalem, he must go to Aqsa Mosque. So in the, when you go to the Aqsa Mosque in the old city, you will meet a checkpoint, and maybe more than one checkpoint, and they ask about identity. When they see that my name is Maruf, I am Arab, going to the mosque, they just stop me beside and uh, start to ask me a few questions. Where are you from? What are you doing here? By the way, you Jerusalem in the center of the, of the country, I live in the north. So it's two hours far away from me. So they just ask, what are you doing here? Uh, because the Aqsa Mosque is a, a holy place for Muslim and the Jewish take it, uh, not take it. They think because historical, it's a, 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 a holy place for him, for them. So maybe, maybe if you will just listen to this story, it's a short story by the way, and you will not say it's a racism because it's checkpoint that they need to check. But in this story specific, 
Is that what I what what I felt in the same time that he stopped me because I felt the uh, racism from the the guard, the security guards. So this is one story that I can share. I have more, but I don't call yeah, it over time. I understand. So would you say that you have like the same opportunities as Jewish people, for example, in education, just like in just like everyday life? No, no, it's it's like no, no. I don't think that uh, that we have the same opportunities. For example, we are as Arab in Israel, we cannot be prime minister. We can be part of the government, but prime minister we cannot be because that that Israel is a Jewish country, so we cannot be Arab in Jew in a prime minister for Jewish country. We can live like in a uh, world, for example, uh, not all places, but some workplaces. Uh, the Arab cannot be manager. You can be employee. It's okay. You can uh, you can be you can work there, but you cannot you cannot be you can't grow. You just need to be employee in the mess. So yeah, what about like in education? Education it's complicated because if you if you look uh, macro in the macro in the bigger in the bigger way, yeah. so you will not see the difference. But if you look Closely, closely, you you will see uh, it's different between Arab and Jewish. So, what human rights do you think they're breaking? The government or just like people in general? Mm -hmm. It depends. If we will talk about the the government, then we will talk about Arab in Israel and our and Arab in West Bank and Arab in Gaza. Palestine has Palestine. So, if we will talk about this situation they break all the human rights not just one human right but at least i can say that we are arab lived in israel we don't see we don't feel safe in the country because we don't see that the country just a uh, uh, secure us so you feel unsafe yeah like, if you would just go to the street would you feel unsafe yes yes i'm so sorry to hear that yeah but do you think it will ever end I don't know, actually. I wish it will ever end, but the reality show don't show that. But what can we do to help, like you, you and your community, and can we do like anything, yeah, to help you just in general? Mm -hmm. I think everyone can help if this issue uh, resonates and everyone listen and discuss. The matter, but there is a blackout on the issue, and uh, all platforms, with the social media and television, show the the rosy life and not the reality. Yeah. So we need to talk more about this issue, and we need to show it to the to the whole world. The world, yeah. Because media is like not showing. No, anything. media not showing. Media yeah. just show that everything is okay, mm -hmm. and they don't show the bad things. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can talk just like for the end. What can even people do to help like end inequality and discrimination and racism? I I just think so. You can do little things from when you hear a little comment, you can say stand up and for that person be no, that's not okay. When you're a group of friends and there's one person that's you say like something racist, so the one person saying something racist to another person, if you're that person who stands up and says no, that's not okay, it makes a massive difference to the group of people. I've lived through that, and that one person that says no, that's not okay, it makes a massive difference because then the group next time that person will say going racist, even if it's a joke, they'll they'll think a bit more, they'll think twice before saying it, and they eventually they'll stop saying it because they know that this. Like, what was that? that the education can do can play a big part yes. of this uh, plus the family because i don't think that anyone will grow with racism mm -hmm. uh, it's just some something that they put it inside so it's stuck in the family and it's in with education yes i i wanted to say the exact same thing i also think that we should be like educating people from a, such a young age because you are not born with racism. Yeah, not born racist. You yeah, exactly. Second. And just like you know, parents shape your mind. You know, when I was experiencing racism in kindergarten, the children were like getting this from their parents. You know, so yeah, education is so important. And like just 
maybe join some organizations that are like anti-racist, that are fighting for rights, maybe just, you know, speak up about it, just also, acknowledge the problems. Yes. I think, I think, oh, sorry, 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 Dale. But I think that uh, the movement or the informal education can, can help a lot with this uh, issue because uh, sometimes in the school you don't meet the other, but uh, the informal education can uh, just hit you and uh, give you this uh, opportunity to, to meet the others and to meet the different. And uh, I think it will end clearly. Also speaking to people about their experiences, like we've done in the middle of speaking to them and understanding their point of view, what they've lived through, can help you open your mind to what people in the whole world experience. And I think it's really interesting to hear other people's stories. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As we wrap up this episode, it's clear that racism is a deeply entrenched issue that continues to impact lives worldwide. But it's equally clear that change is, change is possible when we confront it head on, educate ourselves and actively work towards a more just and inclusive society. I want to thank our guests for your candid and insightful contributions to this conversation. Your voice is vital at raising awareness and inspiring action. To our listeners, I encourage you to continue learning, engaging in conversations, and taking meaningful steps to combat racism in your own lives and communities. Change starts with each one of us, and together we can build a more equitable future. If you found this podcast meaningful, please consider sharing it with others. Your support helps us reach a broader audience and make a greater impact. Thank you for joining us on Racism Unfiltered. Until next time, let's keep the conversation going and strive for a world free from racism.